Hello everyone, welcome to the channel, my name is Cordant and in this video I'm bringing you a list of what I consider to be the best and more useful spells you can take in your Sorcerer starting in Baldur's Gate 1, going through the entirety of Baldur's Gate 2 and then finishing up by killing Melisande in Throne of Ball. Uh, this is a list that can work perfectly fine in the base game, although it can be a little bit overkill. Uh, it's more tailored to the type of game that I play, which is with the SCS and the Ascension mods. If you guys don't know what these are, these are two mods that exist for Baldur's Gate that will increase the overall difficulty of the game. It will greatly improve enemy artificial intelligence, especially spellcasters, making the fights a lot more interesting. You get to use a lot more of your spells, a lot more of your tools. In my opinion, it's the best difficulty ever added to a game in the history of gaming. <laughs> Okay, that's just my opinion, but it is what it is. So if you guys don't know what those are, and you are curious, and you want to bump up your experience playing Baldur's Gate, I definitely very highly recommend those mods. Uh, other than that, this is a list for a sorcerer playing in a party composition. So if you plan on taking a sorcerer as a solo character, some of the choices would probably change. So you would need some highly specific spells to make up for the fact that you do not have access to certain classes. Just as an example, you don't have a thief, so you might want to pick the level 2 spell knock to be able to open doors, chests, what have you. In any case, like I said, this build is for somebody included in a party. So, for our example here, I'm just gonna take my sorcerer, I'm going to give him four and a half million experience points okay and this simulates level 24 and we're gonna go through the spells I already have and then we're gonna go through the spells we will pick up during the level up okay ah so first of all if you are only interested in checking out the list and you don't care about any kind of explanation or thought process behind the choices Feel free to just look at the description, I will leave everything there, as well as um, timestamps for the specific levels, if you guys are curious. Uh, regardless, if you want to hear the explanation and my thought process, the rest of the video serves for that purpose. Okay, so starting at level 1, we're also going to go through the order in which we pick these spells. I always start my playthroughs with Shield and Blindness. So, shield is very important because, especially if you're trying to play the game in a, a no-reload fashion or reloading as little as possible, uh, this will help you out tremendously because your sorcerer at the start of the game is going to be rather squishy. He doesn't have a lot of AC, he doesn't have many hit points, he's very easily killed, especially by ranged enemies. Shield helps you out a lot with that, because this is something you can cast very quickly, with a casting time of 1, lasts for 1 hour, which is more than enough for any kind of combat encounter, and this will set your AC to 4 against all melee weapons, but you shouldn't be in melee to start off, and it will set your AC to 2 against missile weapons. This is almost full plate. At the start of the game, having this available to you at level 1 will make sure that you live throughout several ambushes where you can have like several bandits shooting arrows at you and especially in SES archers tend to focus on the the least well defended character you have and that's usually your backline with your spellcasters. Uh, as a bonus this also makes you immune to magic missiles which is also something that's commonly cast by your enemies. Very very good spell, it's, it has use through the entire Baldur's Gate 1, Baldur's Gate 2, and it can even be useful in Throne of Ball. Blindness is the first disabling spell that I pick. This is a, an awesome spell. It will render an enemy blind for two entire hours. The casting time is short, it's only two, and of course they have a saving throw, but if they fail their saving throw, they are blinded, and they receive a 4 penalty to attack rolls and armor class. Both of these are very useful, but naturally the more important one here is being blinded. 
If you blind an archer, he can't shoot anything. If you blind a melee fighter and you run away from him, he can no longer find you. If you blind a spellcaster, he cannot target you. So, what this means pretty much is, you cast this on someone, if they fail their save, they are out of the fight. Period. Awesome, awesome disabling spell. The third spell I take is usually going to be Magic Missile or Spook, depending on how I feel like. Magic Missile doesn't do a lot of damage in the early levels, because the number of missiles you shoot depends on the level, so you can take this a little bit later. So I'm going to start with Spook. Spook is another disabling spell, and it's also very powerful and very useful. This one doesn't last two hours, it only lasts three rounds. Also, a very quick cast time of one instead of two. But the great thing about this spell is that it comes with a saving throw penalty. And this actually scales with your level. What this means is you are picking and you are locking in a level 1 spell slot for your sorcerer, which you can no longer change, that actually scales with your level. Making it so it's useful through the entire Baldur's Gate 1, but it's also useful through the majority of Baldur's Gate 2. A disabling spell that renders someone useless for 3 rounds that comes with a 6 penalty to save, this is amazing. So, very nice disabling spell, I take it pretty much every time. Magic Missile, I think everybody knows this one by now. Very nice, uh, unerring magical damage spell. So, it deals magic damage, not commonly resisted. Casting time of 1, very short. It never misses. Uh, it Creatures don't get a saving throw against it. And it deals decent damage. Especially later on, you can do some crazy stuff with this. Very nice spell. In my opinion, always take it. <laughs> Unless you're running some kind of pacifist sorcerer. The fifth spell is pretty much whatever you want. I would like to have a better answer for this, but that's the, the real honest answer. I usually take protection from petrification as I find it useful when fighting basilisks. Especially if you want to get a lot of experience early. You don't have to bother with scrolls, you can just take protection from petrification. And it's also useful if you are facing an enemy that casts Chromatic Orb, and Chromatic Orb can petrify you at certain levels, or if they cast Stone to Flash, uh, sorry, Flash to Stone, or some other kind of effect that petrifies you, this just makes you completely safe against that, which can be very useful. Other notable mentions. For Baldur's Gate 1, Sleep is very, very powerful. It's a spell that can completely turn the tide of a fight single-handedly. It will disable everything in an area, especially for the first half of the game. It will pretty much win every fight for the first half of Baldur's Gate 1 by itself. Okay? My problem with sleep is, as soon as you go past mid-game in Baldur's Gate 1, <clears throat> or even more so when you go to Baldur's Gate 2, Sleep does nothing. And we're playing a sorcerer. When we lock in our spells, that's what we're going to have up until Melisan, at the end of Throne of Ball. I don't like having a spell that does nothing after a certain point uh, in my sorcerer. So that's why I don't pick it in my sorcerer. Otherwise, sleep is also a very powerful spell. If you are only planning on playing Baldur's Gate 1, I would say take sleep. <clears throat> very solid choice. Another one that's worth mentioning is Identify. Identify will allow you to identify any unidentified item that you find throughout the game. In Baldur's Gate 1, this can be very, very useful. Once you get to Baldur's Gate 2, again, you're going to start having items that identify stuff for you. You're going to start swimming in gold so you can just identify it in a vendor. And you're also going to have companions that will probably have a high lore um, score that allows them to identify the items just by looking at them. So, also a notable mention, but again, not really useful up to a certain point, so I don't generally take it. Now, on to level 2. So here, we're gonna start with some of the spells that actually I didn't want to start off with. <laughs> so we are going to do our level up now. So that I can go into more detail what I mean. So, level up. 
Uh, the HLAs, I won't go into too much detail because you can pretty much just pick them all. Doesn't really make much of a difference. But I will talk about them a little bit in the end as to the order in which I like to take them. In any case, <clears throat> let's look at the level ups. So I was going for level 2. And the spells I take here are Blur, Detect Invisibility, Invisibility, Mirror Image, and Web. So, in terms of ordering, usually I will take Web as my first pick of a level 2 spell. The reason for this being, in Baldur's Gate 1, I believe Web is pretty much the best disabling spell you can find in the entire game. It will win a lot of fights. Um, a very clear example is the Bandit Camp. You can have 50 enemies coming at you, you toss a couple of webs, everybody gets paralyzed and you just kill them off with fireballs or you can kill them off with somebody with a ring of free action or you can kill them off with archers. There's so many options for you. Web just helps out so incredibly much that it, for me it's pretty much mandatory almost. <laughs> so for BG1 web best disabling spell ever with the exception of very late game spells like chaos but that's kind of beside the point it's also very useful throughout a lot of Baldur's Gate 2 even though you have other tools at that point the web can still be very useful so definitely something worth picking up the second spell I usually take here is going to be a mirror image this is a very nice defensive spell it will create mirror images duplicates of yourself which the enemies when they are trying to hit you will have a chance of hitting the image instead this is very good because naturally if an enemy hits an image it will completely negate the damage coming from that from that attack it also works against something like magic missiles it will consume the missiles it will consume for example a melf's acid arrow it will consume a fire arrow Anything that targets you can be consumed by mirror images. Very good spell, useful the entire game. For my third pick, I usually like taking either Detect Invisibility or Invisibility. I'm going to start with this one uh, because it's the overall more useful one, I guess. Invisibility is extremely useful. It has many, many uses. You can put this on anybody in your party, for example a thief, you can send him scouting ahead, he can check for enemies, he can disable traps, he can do anything he likes and nobody will see him. This also lasts for 24 hours, so there's even other uses like if you want to do an area transition from one point of the map to the other and you are afraid of getting ambushed because you are low on resources, low on HP, whatever, you can just put your party members invisible and you will not be able to get ambushed while this is up. Naturally, in a fight, people can target you, people can see you. There's a lot of stuff you can do here. Detect Invisibility. This one is a very useful spell. What this does is in uh, an area of 120 feet around you, it will detect anything that can be invisible. And it even detects stuff that's invisible through non-magical means. Such as, for example, a thief hiding in shadows. Uh, why is this useful? In SCS especially, you are going to have a lot of enemies who are going to try and turn themselves invisible in fights against you. Uh, the typical enemy and very dangerous enemy are thieves because they can turn invisible in order to backstab your party. And that can be very very backbreaking leading into permanent kills in your party members which you want to avoid and also pretty much any spellcaster in the game will turn himself invisible so being able to dispel all of that especially in a very quick cast time is in my opinion something that's extremely handy to have and it's going to be useful the entire game Baldur's Gate 1, Baldur's Gate 2, Throne of Ball I love picking this up even if I have other casters in my party, I like that my sorcerer can cast this at will. Finally, we have Blur. Blur is really, in my opinion, not that important. 
but it's a nice spell, it lasts for a long duration, the quick cast time, it gives you effectively a bonus of 3 AC, which stacks with other things, because this doesn't actually give you AC. This causes missile and melee attacks against you to be made with a penalty. And it also gives you a plus one bonus to all saving throws. So, quite handy to have, quite useful. Uh, there's other stuff here, you will also note I'm playing with Icewind Dale spells. Uh, I don't actually pick any of the Icewind Dale spells for my list, but you could take them. Um, just a note, if you are someone that thinks you will never use web in Baldur's Gate 2 because you have other stuff like Chaos and whatnot, um, even though I would still recommend this spell, you can always take something else, like for example a Melfast Darrow, which is cool for interrupting spellcasters. Uh, you can take something like... There's not actually that many awesome choices other than that. But I would say Melf Sassidero could be useful if you want. And there's also a noteworthy mention here in Vocalize. Because there is an item in Baldur's Gate 2, which you can obtain fairly soon, if you know what you're doing, that will make you immune to silence. Uh, that's the Amulet of Power. However, if you intend on giving the Amulet of Power to another party member, uh, such as, for example, Anaman is actually a pretty great person to give the Amulet of Power to, especially if you're playing with Icewind Dale spells, um, Vocalize can be a nice pickup to make sure you are immune to silence effects, because if your sorcerer gets silenced, you're pretty much screwed. So, do keep this spell in mind if you are planning on not using the Amulet of Power on yourself. So, these are the picks. Web, Mirror Image, Invisibility, Detective Invisibility, and Blur. For level 3, <coughs> the picks are going to be... Melf's Minute Meteors, Protection from Fire, Remove Magic, Skull Trap, and Slow. So, usually I start by taking Slow. This spell... Uh, if it hits, because creatures can save against it, although they have a, a penalty of 4 to save against this, so it's, it's actually a pretty powerful disabling effect. If this lands, this is very, very powerful. It's extremely crippling to your enemies. It will slow down their movements, it will slow down their attacks, and also, very importantly, it lowers their AC, making them easier kills. It will also negate haste. If you're fighting somebody that's hasted, you want to slow them down, this will cancel the haste buff. This can turn the tide of a fight single-handedly. Very, very powerful spell. I do recommend it. Although, I can also say, this is something that you usually don't cast that many times during a fight. You typically cast it once and that's it. So you can actually swap this for Spell Trust. Spell Trust can be used throughout... Again, Baldur's Gate 1, Baldur's Gate 2, and even in Throne of Ball, because SCS opponents love buffing themselves with minor globes of invulnerability and sometimes minor spell deflections and minor spell turnings. And this also removes stuff like spell shield and spell immunity. So this spell can be useful the entire game. Definitely a worthy pickup if you want to swap it around with any of these other spells. But since I usually have this on my other characters and you have more powerful anti-magic further down the line, it's not mandatory. It's definitely a good spell to have, though. Okay, secondly, I take Skull Trap. This is pretty much the same thing as a Fireball, give or take, except you can use this as a trap. It's in the name. <laughs> you can just put it in a place, and when an enemy walks over, it will blow up for AoE damage. In my opinion, this is better than a Fireball because of the damage type. Skull Trap deals magic damage. Fireball deals fire damage. Fire damage is very commonly resisted throughout Baldur's Gate. Magic damage, not so much. So, that, coupled with the fact that you can use this as Trap, is a pretty nice spell to have. You can also slot this into Spell Sequences, which we'll go over later, making this a very powerful pickup. After this, I usually like taking Remove Magic. Remove Magic is one of the most important spells 
for taking care of enemies that like to buff themselves magically. What this does is, if your enemy is not immune to abjuration, and most enemies are not, this will remove pretty much all of their buffs. There's a list that tells you which spells are removed and which are not, but for the most part this takes out everything that's important. So, if you are fighting, let's say, a very high level opponent, a very high level spellcaster, um, he has stuff like spell trap and spell turning and spell deflection and, and um, globe of invulnerability, uh, a stone skin, protection from magical weapons, he has all of his buffs. But, he did not buff himself with spell immunity to abjuration. Remove magic is going to remove all of his combat defenses. Which means, with a single spell, you are going to remove all of his defenses and you can send your fighter in to chop him up. Very important spell. This will win fights for you many, many times. Definitely worth taking. Also, to note, there's remove magic... And there's also Dispel Magic. They both do the same thing, but Remove Magic only affects enemies. Which is very important, because if you're sending your fighters um, buffed up into your opponents, if you send Dispel Magic, you're going to dispel your opponents, and you're also going to dispel your own characters. Uh, okay. Other than that, we have Protection from Fire, which I take last. And then I usually take, as a fourth pick, Mel's Minute Meteors. This is something that's pretty much your bread and butter in terms of dealing damage through attacks in your casters, for the most part, mages and sorcerers. This spell will conjure a certain number of meteors in your hands, which you can throw and use as a throwing weapon. Um, the number of meteors scales with your level. You pretty much get one meteor for every level that you have. These attack with the plus 5 bonus to attack, they deal 1d4 plus 3 points of damage, plus additional 3 points of fire damage. This is a very, very powerful spell. This can do a lot more damage than it seems right here. You attack 5 times per round, and you also have elemental damage. This is very important, because if you're fighting enemy spellcasters, especially mages, they love buffing themselves up with stone skin, which you can only hit them after you break the stone skins. Because while they have stone skins, they are immune to physical damage. However, since every hit also deals fire damage, the fire damage will go through. Which means you can interrupt enemy spellcasters buffed with stone skin by using Mel's Minute Meteors. Very good spell. I always take this. As a fifth pick, you can take other stuff other than protection from fire. <clears throat> you can take something like a spell trust, you can take vampiric touch to get a, a, an additional buffer of HP. Um, you can take haste, which is also a notable mention I had here. Flame arrow, not bad either. But there's there are so many times where you really want and need to be protected from fire that I feel it's important that my sorcerer have this up at any time that's necessary. Uh, because if for, for some unlucky reason you get dispelled during a fight and you lose protection from fire, high level, high level spellcasters love to cast something like a dragon's breath or a comet on top of you. And that will one shot your sorcerer or mage. So having protection from fire to cast uh, anytime you need it, I think is necessary and important enough to take up a level 3 spell slot on my sorcerer. There is one important distinction to make here. If you are playing with the, the, the sorcerer kit Dragon Disciple, you don't really need this. This is useful because you can affect other creatures, but for yourself, Dragon Disciple pretty much means you are immune to fire innately, so you don't need this buff. Okay, that's a consideration, and honestly, in my opinion, there's really not much reason for you to play a normal sorcerer instead of a, a dragon disciple, except maybe for some kind of role-playing reason, like I did with my Palpatine in my playthrough. Uh, if you want to be more powerful, just play a dragon disciple, it's just better. 
Okay, so that wraps up level 3 spells. For level 4, <coughs> our picks, and now I don't have any here, so I can just start by order. Our first pick is going to be Stone Skin. So, like I mentioned previously, this is something that pretty much any enemy mage will use against you. This will give you a certain number of Stone Skins, which means you are going to get, for example, if you are level 10, you get 5 skins, if you are level 20, you get 10 skins, and so forth. As long as you have skins, you are immune to physical damage. If a fighter, a, a really powerful fighter, comes at you with a two-handed sword and smacks you for 80 physical damage or 300 damage from a backstab, it's negated. Completely negated. This doesn't work like 3rd edition, where it's simply damage reduction, this will completely negate the attack. Making this pretty much generically your best defensive spell ever. You always want to have this up in your mages. As a casting time of 1, so you can use it when you need it during a combat, during a fight. It lasts for 12 hours, so you use it once and it's done for the rest of your adventuring day. And it's also a very cool spell to have when you're playing um it's also a very cool spell to cast before resting because a rest lasts for eight hours this lasts for 12 hours you get out of the rest and you still have your stone skin best spell at level four this is my first pick no doubt um for a second pick i usually take grit of <clears throat> this is something that you usually only cast one time in a fight so, arguably, you can leave this up to your other spellcasters in the party, but I find myself wanting to have this on my sorcerer every time, because if you are playing a sorcerer, you are usually going to be giving him the Robe of Vecna, right? To improve your spellcasting speed. For those who don't know, Robe of Vecna is an item, a robe, which will reduce the casting time of all of your spells by 4. Which means, for example, this one has a casting time of 4, it would be instant. And I find myself in fights where I'm having, for example, Edwin start casting Greater Malison, but then I want my sorcerer to cast a disabling spell, and I'm like, should I wait for Edwin to cast this so I can cast mine? It, it, it gets a little bit awkward. It, it's more so in practice than what I'm making it seem right now, at least for me. And that is reason alone for me to want to have this on my sorcerer. And this is something that's always good. This will lower the saving throws of all your enemies by 4. There is no saving throw against this, and it's AoE. So it's definitely always a very useful spell to have. For my third pick... Let me check my notes. Ah, my third pick, I will usually take <coughs> Spirit Armor. Again, this is something that you could have your other spellcasters cast on yourself, but I find that this is a spell that I pretty much use every single time, so I like to have it available on my sorcerer, because I can also buff my other characters with it. And that's impo important for a reason we'll go through in a, in a while. So, this lasts for 2 hours, and it will pretty much make it so your AC is that of full plate. Your AC gets set to 1. It will also buff your save versus spell by 3. Okay, so this is this is a very, very good defensive spell. As a, as a mage or as a sorcerer, your AC is never going to be that spectacular, right? But by simply casting this, for 2 hours you have the same AC as somebody wearing full plate, which is very, very good. Especially because if you combine this with something like Blur, and if you combine this with Stone Skin, and if you combine this with Mirror Images, it's going to be extremely tough for enemies to actually be able to hit you. Because it's either gonna burn through a Stone Skin, or it's gonna burn through a Mirror Image, or it's simply gonna miss because of all of the AC that you are stacking with this. So, very cool spell to have, definitely, I love, t I love taking it. I never regret taking it. For my final choice here, you, you get five choices, but the fifth spell pick comes so late. So this is me leveling up to level 24 
and I still don't have my fifth pick. So it's not very relevant for the for this particular video. My last pick, my fourth pick here, is Improved Invisibility. So this has all of the advantages that Invisibility has on level 2, with the exception that it lasts less time. It has a casting time of 4 instead of 2, but it can also affect any other creature, just like Invisibility. The main difference here is you have a bonus to your defense and a bonus to your saving throws for, this is a lot, a, a lot, um, a lot of defense is coming from one spell. So just passively, this would be reason enough to take this spell. But the other great part is, even if you cast something or you attack someone while in invisible through improved invisibility, even though you the enemies become aware of you and they can attack you, you still cannot be targeted by spells, which makes this incredible. So you can still get hit naturally by a fireball, a fighter can hit you, an archer can shoot you, but you can't get targeted by a blind, for example, or a spook, or a power ward, or, um, or a breach. So this will grant you a lot of defenses on a single spell. Definitely take this every single time, in my opinion. It's very, very good. The one thing I would say, keep, uh, keep in mind, that while this makes you untargetable by enemy spells, it will also make you untargetable to your own party spells. Unless they can see through invisibility like somebody who has true seeing up. Why is this important? If you cast this on somebody like, for example, uh, one of your melee fighters, and you send him into a fight, if he takes damage and you need to heal him quickly, you will not be able to heal him. At least not with something that targets. If you have something like Mass Cure, you can heal him a little bit, but the really nice spell Heal, you will not be able to target your invisible character. And unlike Invisibility from level 2, which you can break simply by speaking, this one you cannot actually remove from yourself when you want it. Ah, also something I wanted to mention uh, for the level 2 spell invisibility. Something that's also very, very useful is if during a fight one of your companions gets, for example, paralyzed, which pretty much means he's gonna die, you can very quickly use the level 2 spell invisibility to make him invisible, nobody can see him, so you just made your friend safe even though he's paralyzed. Invisibility is very, very powerful in this game. Uh, a notable mention here is also haste. So if you find yourself not wanting to take Greater Malison on your Sorcerer, or you don't want Spirit Armor, haste is definitely a very nice pickup. If you are playing with Icewind Dale spells, Vitriolic Sphere is also a cool spell, deals acid damage, ticks multiple times, hits like a truck. It's a cool spell, and it's also a cool spell to take when you get your fifth pick later on in the game. Moving on to number 5. <clears throat> so, number 5. Typically, what I start off by taking here is either going to be Breach or it's going to be Spell Immunity. I'm going to start with Breach because this is the one I usually take first. Breach is pretty much the best anti-magic defense spell in the game. This will dispel all of the specific and combat protections on the target creature making them easy targets for your physical damage dealers to chop them up. So, like we discussed previously, if you have an enemy mage that buffed himself with protection from magical weapons and stone skin, for example, your fighters will not be able to hit that enemy, period. They, they can try, they cannot hit him with anything at all. Non-magical weapons will not work because the stone skin will consume the hit. Magical weapons will not work because of protection from magic weapons. Uh, there's also, naturally, other spells, but I'm not going to go through all of them. But Breach will remove those defenses. If you can Breach an enemy spellcaster and you have a fighter type close by, this pretty much means you are going to kill him. Same thing for you. If you get Breached <laughs> and you can't defend yourself while a fighter is on you, you're going to die. 
Very important spell, especially in SCS. Removing defenses from enemy casters and enemy... Uh, even characters that aren't particularly very pure spell cast, like dragons, like to buff themselves up with stone skins. This will remove all of that stuff. Very important spell. Spell Muti. <clears throat> also another mandatory spell in my opinion. This will make you immune to any spell school of your choosing. And you can also stack these. You can make yourself immune to several spell schools. <clears throat> what this means is, when you cast a spell, you get a choice. You can choose between evocation, abjuration, transmutation, necromancy, all that stuff. And whichever the school you choose, you are completely immune to any spell of that school. This means targeted spells, AoE spells, uh, disabling effects, debuffs, you are immune to all of that. The most generically useful use <laughs> for spell immunity is spell immunity abjuration. Why? Because <clears throat> typically be before a big fight you are going to be buffing your characters with a lot of buffs. Uh, buffs from your clerics, from your druids, from your mages, from potions, from items. A lot of things you can do to improve your combat prowess and your characters. However, if somebody throws a remove magic or a dispel magic like we saw in level 3 at your characters and you fail to resist, which usually happens because enemies are very high level, if you are not immune to abjuration, all of your buffs are going away. That means you just wasted all of your buffs, you wasted your potions, and you're probably going to die. <laughs> because somebody without buffs is very susceptible to all kinds of effects, and you are in, in, in a lot more danger than otherwise. So, very, very cool thing to do. Buff yourself with Spell Immunity Abjuration if you expect somebody to cast Remove Magic or Dispel Magic at you. Other uses, naturally, if, for example, there's, there's an incendiary cloud on the map, or a web, or um, a cloud kill, and you want to walk through that area, you can make yourself immune to the spell school of that particular area of effect, and you can just walk through the cloud or the web, no big deal, doesn't affect you. This can also make you immune to traps, this can make you immune to stuff like the deck of many things, there's, there's so many uses for this spell, definitely take it, it's going to help you out tremendously. For my third pick, I usually like take lower, le taking lower resistance. <clears throat> what this does is it will lower the magic resistance of the target by a significant amount. So 10% plus 1% per level of the caster. There's no saving throw against this, and if the target has magic resistance, he cannot resist lower resistance. Makes sense, right? So, why is this important? At a certain point in the game, you are going to start finding enemies which have high magic resistance. I will give you a simple example. A dragon has innate magic resistance. If you want to deal magic damage to a dragon, if you want to contribute damage with your sorcerer against a dragon, if you don't have a way to lower his magical resistance, you are pretty much useless. You can buff your companions, but you, you can also tank, but you cannot deal damage to the dragon. It's going to be very unlikely that you hit anything. Um, lower resistance will drop their magic resistance so that you can actually hit your spells. So you are now able to disable them, you are able to debuff them, you are able to damage them through magical means. So for my playstyle, I like taking this because I usually have at least two arcane casters in my party and I also like dealing damage with them, so this is a very good spell to have. One note, however, <clears throat> if you are planning on taking a party which is primarily focused on physical damage, so something like a lot of fighters and clerics and, and thieves, and you have, for example, a single arcane caster in your party, probably you're not going to be relying on magical damage all that much. So you can kind of skip lower resistance and take something else that's more useful, more generically useful, I should say, like Cloud Kill or Chaos, which are both very, very good spells, instead of taking lower resistance and you just 
um, you just let your fighter types deal the damage. But for my playstyle, and if you want to deal damage with your sorcerer and your mages, I definitely recommend lower resistance. Finally, the last spell I take here, because again, you get the fifth pick, but it's, it's much later in the game. So I'm going to stick to the ones you're going to be playing with for the majority of the game. My fourth pick and final one is going to be Spell Shield. This is a very simple spell in what it does, but also very important. This makes it so you are protected from the next magical attack made against you. Now, let's be clear. A magical attack isn't a, magical, um, a magic missile here. It's not a fireball. It's specifically targeted against um, anti-magic attacks. So something like a spell trust, a secret ward, a breach, a lower resistance, a pierce magic, ruby ray. All these things that strip you of your magical defenses, spell shield is going to consume. This is particularly good because this is the only spell that will stop a spell strike. A spell strike is a level 9 spell which takes off every magical defense you have. But if you have a spell shield, it will only consume the spell shield. This is a very nice spell to have, it will keep you safe against something like this. Very handy, very worth having. Moving up to level 6. Let me just move my notes here. Because I, I do have my notebook uh, open here. <clears throat> okay, so my first pick, as soon as I get to level 6, is always Improved Haste. Again, this is why I'm talking about this is for party play. Improved Haste will double the movement of its target, it will double the attack rate of the target, and it also gives them a bonus to initiative. Nobody cares. <laughs> um, why is this so good? If you have someone like Corgan or any kind of fighter type that attacks fast, so going back to my example, Corgan, dual wielding, can very easily reach 5 attacks per round. If you cast Improved Haste on him, he's going to have 10 attacks per round, while moving at double speed. If you put Corgan with improved haste next to somebody, that somebody is going to die. I guarantee it. <laughs> if you check my playthrough, Corgan was one of the most important pieces for the entire game, a crucial piece of the party. That was definitely my main damage dealer. And again, this can be used in anyone. It's not only useful for, for a fighter. If you cast this on a mage or on yourself, and you have something like uh, Mel's Minute Meteors, which you should have if you are following these, these spell picks, you are going to be shooting 10 Minute Meteors per round. That stacks up very quickly. That's a lot of damage. This spell is borderline broken. I like having it on my sorcerer because I like having as much as many casts of it as possible. Definitely one of the best spells in level 6. I always, always take it. Second pick is going to be another defensive spell in protection from magical weapons. So we spoke about Stone Skin. <clears throat> Stone Skin is great for all the reasons I named. It will make you immune to any kind of physical attack that somebody does against you. What it doesn't protect you against is any other kind of effect that might come from that attack. So if your enemy is attacking you with a normal sword, stone skin will absorb it. If an enemy is attacking you with a fire sword, stone skin will absorb the physical damage, but it will not absorb the fire damage. So you will still take the fire damage. Protection from magical weapons is going to completely 100% negate any attack made by a weapon that's at least a plus one, that's at least of plus one enchantment against your sorcerer. So, this is particularly useful, like I said, if somebody is attacking you with a weapon that has some kind of elemental damage attached to it. If you're fighting against, for example, a planetar, which has dispelling attacks and has vorpal hits, which can instantly decapitate you. Um, this will make you completely safe against them for 4 rounds. Enemy spellcasters will use this against you all the time. That's why Breach is so important. And for the same reasoning, 
this is a very very powerful um, spell to have at your disposal Le uh, my third pick is protection from magic energy so <clears throat> again this is another spell that's very simple in what it does it lasts a very long time it lasts one turn per level so very very long time you can cast this on any creature you want of your party and what it does is it renders you 100% invulnerable to all magic based attacks such as magic missile or Abidalzim's horrid wilting. So it seems kind of weird having this spell to only deal with these two kinds of attacks, but it's much more important than you think. Later on in Baldur's Gate 2, enemy spellcasters are gonna love casting horrid wilting against your party uh, because it's not commonly resisted. And the only way you have to resist a Horrid Wilting is specifically by using Protection from Magic Energy. Uh, they will cast this against you, they will put this in chain contingencies and pop three at once against your party. And if you are not protected, trust me, you are going to die. Or pretty much all of your party, all of the squishes are going to die to a Horrid Wilting. So having this in your party before a fight where you expect some high level spell casters such as a lich this is a very important spell to have as a pre-buff that's why i take it on my sorcerer i like having as many spell casts of it as possible you can also have this on your other casters and it also works but i find it so important that i like having it available um in a in a fair number of of casts possible my final pick, this one is more debatable. I usually like take I usually like take taking Pierce Magic. What this does is it will remove any anti anti magic spell that your opponent might have up to level eight. So if your opponent has spell immunity up, this will dispel it. If your opponent has spell turning. Minus spell deflection, spell deflection, uh, all those things, this will remove the spell. And it will also lower the magic resistance of your target while doing so. It doesn't lower as much as the 5th level spell lower resistance. And it also doesn't remove anti-magic spells as well as a ruby ray would do. So... High level opponents like casting Spell Trap, which is a level 9 spell defense, this will not work against that. The reason why this is cool is you will get Spell Trigger at level 8, and Spell Trigger allows you to slot in 3 spells at once, up to level 6. Convenient, right? <laughs> and you can immediately and instantly um, throw out those 3 spells at somebody. What this means is, if you memorize 3 pierce magic in a spell trigger, um, instantly you can reduce a target spell um, magic resistance by a lot, while also removing 3 of his spell defenses. So, it can be useful, it's quite fun, I wouldn't say it's mandatory or even that important. Uh, I also like swapping this with, for example, Power Word Silence, I kind of choose whatever I feel like as these two are not, uh, as this pick is not that important. The really, the really important stuff here for me is protection from magical weapons, protection from magic energy, um, and improved haste. In any case, I also like taking power word silence at times, because what this does is it will silence a target for 7 rounds. This is very important, and you can imagine, if you silence a spellcaster for 7 rounds, they cannot do anything for 7 rounds, right? The problem with this is, if you're playing with SCS, pretty much every caster you face, every mage, is going to have vocalize memorized. What that means is, they can make themselves immune to your silence. However, clerics, druids, shamans... Any other kind of spellcaster that doesn't have access to vocalize is going to be silenced for 7 rounds. And that can be a very, very powerful effect. Not only that, but even if an enemy mage does have vocalize memorized, what this means is, if you see them casting a spell, 
that you fear for some reason, if you expect a time stop, if you expect a planetar, if you expect a horde building, whatever, you can use power word silence, you will silence them, at least for a short period before they cast vocalize, effectively interrupting their spell for the turn, and then they will also need to spend their next turn casting vocalize. So what this does is effectively silence your target for two rounds which can be very important. It can give you enough time to rip them apart with your fighters, or it can give you two rounds to buff yourself up again or remove their spell defenses. So I've taken this and I've kind of been impressed with its uses. I've used it more often than I expected to, and I do like what this does. So I would also recommend this if you want to try it out. Level 7. <clears throat> so level 7, again, we have four spells here. And the first spell I take in level 7 is always Spell Sequencer. So we've discussed this previously, uh, briefly. What this allows you is to store three spells and activate them all at the same time from the Special Ability button. All spells must be of 4th level or lower. What does this mean? This means you can store three defensive spells, for example, something like uh, a Stone Skin, Improved Invisibility and Mirror Image. So if you get dispelled during a fight, you can instantly pop those three defenses on top of you, making you safe. Very useful. Or, as I prefer doing it, you can use this offensively. So you can s slot in three skull traps here for massive AoE damage. Um, you can slot in something like a Greater Malison, a Slow, and a Glitter Dust, for example, to disable your opponent's uh, in an AoE. Or, my personal favorite, you can slot in 3 Remove Magic. The more Remove Magics you cast, the more likely you are your opponent won't be able to resist it, and you will completely remove all of their magical buffs, making them easy targets for your party. This is very versatile, you can do whatever you want with this. You can cast 3... you can store 3 spooks on this, uh, 3 webs, Whatever you want, whatever you need, this will help you out a lot. Take this, you will not regret it. My second choice is always Ruby Ray, Ruby Ray of Reversal. This, like we talked about previously with Pierce Magic, will remove a, um, an anti-magic defense that an opponent has. This one, however, is universal. It will remove anything from any level. So even a level 9 spell trap gets removed by a ruby ray. This is a crucial spell. You want to have this on every single one of your spell casters. If you're playing with mages, like for example Edwin, I always give him like three or four spells, uh, three or four spell slots with ruby ray. I give some to Jan. This is something that will always be useful. So always have this ready. It will help you out in fighting enemy spellcasters. My third pick is Project Image. Project Image is <clears throat> um, a spell that can, can create some discussion around it. You can either call, the, call this spell completely broken or, as I prefer to call it, a lot of fun. <laughs> <laughs> so this spell can be very very useful. It's a lot of fun to use. You definitely when I get this spell, definitely it's kind of the point where I start seeing my character as a a capable spellcaster, a capable spell chucker into the beginnings of godhood. This will make you extremely powerful. What this does is it creates an illusionary copy of the caster and you can move it around freely. However, when you do this, the caster itself is rooted in place. You cannot move with your character. The image also cannot attack, but that's irrelevant for the purposes of the project image. What this allows you to do, however, is, since this is a copy, like a literal copy, all of the spells you know and you have available to your caster are going to be available to your project image. As an example of great power, <laughs> you can use a project image uh, by leaving your caster behind, use a project image, buff up the image, 
Cindy Imagine and do something like Time Stop, improve the Lacrity, and like I said, it's a copy. So if you have RoboVecna, your project image is going to benefit from RoboVecna as well. So it's going to cast spells very, very quickly. If you have improved alacrity, which is a, a high level ability, we will go over that soon, you don't have a, a cooldown between spell casts. So effectively what you can do is send your project image up to a group of enemies, cast time stop, cast improved alacrity, blow your entire spell book on them, completely obliterate any kind of opposition in front of you, <laughs> literally, uh, use up all of your spells, and when the project image effect ends or dies or whatever, you are going to be back at your caster with your entire spellbook available to you. So you pretty much used your entire spellbook at the cost of a single level 7 spell. This is very, very cool, this is very, very important. If you happen to check out my playthrough of Baldur's Gate with Palpatine, uh, I think it's around the Underdark where I start using this to, to greater effect. You will notice my reaction when playing with this stuff. It, it really does feel like you're a, a god at that point. So, very cool spell, a lot of fun, I definitely recommend it. For the final pick, I usually like to take spell turning. Uh, this is an anti-magic defense. What this does is any spell targeted at you for a total of 12 spell levels, this is not this is not infinite, but any spell cast at you, not only is it going to be negated, so you won't suffer from the effects, it's also going to be reflected at the caster. So, for example, if you have this up and an enemy decides to breach you, not only are you not going to get breached, but they are going to breach themselves of all their defenses. Very cool spell. Uh, there's not... There's nothing else on level 7 that I consider extremely important. So I actually like having spell turning as our main anti-magic defense. Moving on to level 8. Level 8 you have some crucial spells here and some very cool stuff as well. So the first pick on level 8 is always going to be either Orid Wilting or it's going to be a spell trigger. This kind of depends on what you want to do. Spell trigger will give you a lot more versatility. Uh, Horrid Wilting gives you the best damaging spell in the game. So I'm going to start with this one. Horrid Wilting is going to be at up from this point onward. It's going to be your main damaging spell. It's going to be your bread and butter when you want to deal large amounts of damage. Why? Because Horrid Wilting, even though the cast time is a bit long, you have Robo Vecna and Amulet of Power to help with that. In a 15 foot radius, it's going to deal 1d8 damage per level of the caster to everyone in the area. Notable mentions, the damage type is magic, so it's one of the least common resisted kinds of uh, damage type. And it's also party friendly, so it will not hit your party. This means you can cast this on top of your fighters in the middle of a fight, only the enemies are going to get hit. This is amazing. This will completely obliterate groups of enemies, especially if you use it in a chain contingency or if you use this combined with a time stop. Really, the amount of damage you can deal with this spell is insane. So, always take this spell. Uh, my other pick would be Spell Trigger. So, we went through Spell Sequencer earlier. This is the same thing. It allows you to store spells and then unleash them instantly. Uh, except this one is better. So, it's the same thing as Spell Sequencer, but better. Because this will allow you to cast, uh, to store spells up to level 6 instead of up to level 4. This is a very big difference because... Up to level 6, you have stuff like triple pierce magic, like we discussed earlier. You have triple lower resistance. You can have triple cloud kills. Uh, you can have triple chain lightnings. Or you can also have something like protection from magical weapons, improved invisibility, stone skin. Again, 
Very versatile spell, very, very useful spell. I would never play a sorcerer without this. Take this one. <laughs> and then my third pick, checking my notes. Ah, my third pick is Power Word Blind. I think this one is very much personal taste from what I've seen uh, throughout the, the internet. But I really like this spell because just like we, we talked about at level 1 with the, with the spell Blind, this one will make somebody blind for 6 rounds. What's to like here? The casting time is 1, which is pretty much instant, and there is no saving throw. This, this here is the big part. This is the big reason why I like taking this. If you are expecting a very capable fighter in, in a given fight, blind them, they're useless. If you can hit a cleric or a mage or whomever with this, they are completely disabled for the rest of the fight, or at least for six rounds, which is more than enough than more than enough time for you to kill your opponent. No saving throw really makes this very appealing. Um, you you don't need to take this naturally. You can take other spells like I don't know a simulacrum or a pierce shield, but for my personal taste, I find this to be more effective than one might think. I'll just give you a, a brief example. Yagashura, one of the five in Throne of Ball. You blind him, he does nothing. <laughs> okay, so he's supposed to be one of the most powerful enemies in the game. He's supposed to be one of the five bosses. If he's blinded, he can't hit you, he can't see you. So, okay, just as an example. This is, this is a very, very powerful spell. So I personally like taking it. Something else you can take is something like Pierce Shield. Uh, but I really don't find it that important to have on your sorcerer. But still, it, it, it is interchangeable. You can also take something like Incendiary Cloud. If you like playing with cloud effects, this one deals a ton of fire damage for an entire turn. Personally, I don't really like using this because if you cast Incendiary Cloud and you send your team in with protection from fire, and for some reason, for example, you have someone like Corgan. Corgan cannot make himself immune to a remove magic effect. So if somebody dispels Corgan while he's standing inside of an incendiary cloud, or God forbid even more, he's gonna melt. <laughs> so I don't really like taking this spell for that reason. So these are, these are my picks. Spell Trigger, Power Word Blind, Habit Dalzim, Sword Wilting. Finally, for the big hitters, we have level 9. For level 9, the first pick that I always do <clears throat> is one of two. It's either going to be Chain Contingency or it's going to be Time Stop. The way you choose between this depends entirely on your playstyle. If you are someone who finds himself um, using Chain Contingency a lot, take this one first because it's, it's better overall than the Time Stop. Um, chain Contingency is similar to Spell Sequencer and Spell Trigger, except this one can store three, three spells up to level 8, but there's a difference in the way you can use it. So a Spell Trigger, you decide when you want to send the spells. On a Contingency, you define a condition. So you can use this spell defensively. It, uh, if you set a condition, for example, when I'm hit, or when my HP is 50% or when I lost control of my character, trigger the contingency and the spells will take place. So for example, you can have something like if I'm hit, cast protection from magical weapons, improved invisibility and stone skin, for example. Or you can use this offensively with something like three hard wilting slotted in and then you place a condition like when an enemy is spotted, instantly cast the spells that are stored. What this means is, if you slot in three Horrid Wiltings or three Incendiary Clouds, as soon as your sorcerer spots an enemy, it will instantly send those three spells at them. For, for, <laughs> for a big part of, of, of fights where you have this available, this will trivialize fights. This will instantly 
mow down hordes of enemies before they can even react. Um, and you don't even need to cast a spell. It's instant. So, extremely powerful spell, both defensively and offensively. Time stop. This is a very... Um, uh, what's the word? A very well-known... and ah, iconic. And very iconic spell in Baldur's Gate. Time stop will cause the wizard to pause... Um, will cause the flow of time to stop for one round in the area of effect. Inside the sphere, the caster is free to act for three rounds of apparent time. This means that if you cast time stop, you can move freely, you can attack, you can cast spells, and everybody else cannot. There are some exceptions in the game, be careful about that. Something like Demogorgon, Melisan, Balthazar, they can react inside of time stops, so that can actually hurt you more than it helps you. Keep that in mind. But for the most part, time stop is one of the best spells in the game um, for several reasons. You can... Cast a time stop to have time to buff yourself up in the middle of a fight. You can cast time stop to strip somebody of their defenses and then just kill them. You can use time stop to blow a bunch of damaging spells to kill everybody in the area. There's, there's a, a very large number of uses for this spell and it's one of my favorite spells to cast. This spell in particular is extremely useful once you get improved alacrity. Like we spoke about before, that's an HLA which will remove the cooldown between casting spells. So normally you can only cast one spell per round. If you have improved alacrity, you can cast as many as you want, as long as the cast time allows you to. So if you cast time stop and you cast improved alacrity, man, the number of spells you can cast during the time stop is insane. You're going to do a lot of damage to a lot of people during that time stop. So, I always take this spell, I, I never not take it, okay? So, for the final spell pick here, there are a couple of choices, none of them are clear-cut, okay? The choices, I'll just go through them. Just are Imprisonment, uh, Spell Strike, and Wish. I'm gonna start with Wish, because this is the one that can be a little bit more controversial. <clears throat> wish is... Well, like most level 9 spells, one of the most powerful spells in the game. If you have a high wisdom score, at least 18, or if you pop a potion of insight to set your wisdom to 18, this spell can be very, very powerful. Because when you cast Wish, you're going to get a genie, and the genie, based on your wisdom, is going to give you choices. And those choices can be insanely powerful. One of those choices is, I want to breach everybody, every enemy in the area. And this is an unblockable breach. You will strip the defenses of everybody in the area, making them very easy kills. Um, another such choice is, I want to give everybody improved haste. Another choice is, and the most important choice is, make it so as if my party had just rested the full night. What this means is, every spell that you had spent up to the point where you cast this wish is going to come back. All of your spell book is going to be restored, just like if you had rested. This can be arguably very, very broken. It can arguably ve be very, very cheesy. But nobody can deny that it can be very insanely powerful. So if you want to be as powerful as possible on your sorcerer, I would say wish is the pick here. Uh, especially because at this point you're going to have like 5 casts of level 9 spells. You have 5 chances for the wish you want. <laughs> this is broken. Okay, so very nice pick. If you don't want to take wish, you might have some reasons to. For example, in my playthrough, I chose not to take wish because I thought for the videos it might not be as enjoyable. So you can take something else. And usually I like taking Spell Strike. Uh, this is something like a Ruby Ray, if you remember Ruby Ray from level 7, except instead of removing a single magical defense, it's going to remove every single magical defense. 
The one exception is, like we talked about earlier, the level 5 spell shield. If you want to use this, make sure your opponent does not have spell shield, or if he does, use something else to remove the spell shield, and then use spell strike and remove all of their defenses. The other option here is imprisonment. Imprisonment, what it does is, it first of all, it allows no saving throw. It has a long cast time, and it only targets one creature. But this will, uh, like they say here, is going to entomb a creature forever. Why is this useful? It's useful because creatures cannot save against this, and if there's a very powerful opponent in your vicinity that you cannot take care of by normal means, you can imprison them, taking them out of the fight forever. Um, I find this most useful if you are playing with a party that's, for example, that, that's very um, spell caster heavy. Uh, because if you face a powerful enemy, such as, for example, a planetar, you can't really dispose of him through normal means quickly or effectively. So, if you need to take a planet out of, the, out of a fight, imprisonment will do that very well. And when I say planetar, I mean anything. A demon, well, naturally you can't imprison bosses, but you get the picture. Very powerful, non-boss type opponents, you can imprison them, you don't have to deal with them, they are gone, and you can carry on. If, however, you are playing with a party that's capable of dealing... Um, consistent and high physical damage, like I usually do, normally I don't need this, because if I want to try and imprison a planetar, I could kind of just as easily send Corgan or Anaman or whomever to chop him up and done. I don't need to spend a spell and I don't need to take up the space of another spell slot for level 9 on my sorcerer. However, it's definitely a very good spell, worth your consideration. Whew. Okay, so this is it for all of our spell choices. I will just briefly go through the HLAs. HLAs are not... I'm not gonna go through them in very much detail because like I said you, you have access to all of them and like the spells you pick one and you're stuck with that. HLAs you can pick them all. I'll just talk about the order in which I pick them in. So, in my opinion, the most powerful high-level abilities are Improved Alacrity and Summon Dark Planetar. The one I pick first kind of depends on my lineup. If my party is very fighter-strong, um, I won't take Planetar first. If I feel that I need an extra powerful summon in the battlefield as quickly as possible, I will take Summon Planetar. This is the best summon in the game, bar none. Uh, this can pretty much win certain fights all by itself, trust me. Uh, very, very powerful. I either pick this one first or second. Improved Alacrity, we've talked about it. Uh, it's going to be either the first pick or the second pick. And then my third pick is going to be Dragon's Breath. Um, noteworthy about this spell. This acts like a gigantic fireball, like a dragon's breath. It deals 20 d10 fire damage in an area. And something that doesn't mention here is... Uh, first of all, it's party friendly, which is insane. But something that doesn't get mentioned here is... This goes through magic resistance. So if you start facing, for example, drow or mind flayers or any other kind of um, numerous... Uh, fighting party that has magic resistance you can't dispose of them easily because at a certain point you're gonna start relying on horrid wilting and AOE magic damage to deal with them and if they have magic resistance you can't do anything Dragon's Breath will pretty much clear out an entire party of Mind Flayers or Drow and if you have this for example on your Sorcerer and on Edwin or any other mage you want Two of these will definitely kill an entire party of magic resistant enemies. So, very, very good spell. It's always, always, always my third pick. Uh, for the other HLAs, do whatever you like. Energy Blades, Comet, extra spell casting for level 6, 7, and 8. 
completely depends on what you feel like doesn't make much of a difference okay so this was a long video i'm not even sure how long let me check Ooh, quite long one hour 15 minutes um <laughs> uh, so i just wanted to say that naturally this is subjective some people are going to prefer certain spells other people are going to prefer other spells this is my um suggestion uh, from playing the game a lot of different times this is what i came up with with the most efficient and most powerful selection that you can have for a sorcerer in a party composition fighting through Baldur's gate be it without or with scs and ascension um so if you guys have a different experience if you guys want to um, i don't know suggest a different spell selection or if you want to um, discuss some choice you feel i did incorrectly or that's less less efficient feel free to leave a comment below i would like to, i would love to to discuss those choices with you guys and also this is a video i made i should have led with this but i, I forgot <laughs> This is a video I made because when I started playing the game, especially when I started playing with, with sorcerers in the game, I had a lot of trouble um, picking the spells that I wanted to take for my playthrough. It's definitely not easy, especially if you don't know the game that well or you don't know the spells that well. It can be very complicated to know which spell you should take. And at the time... I tried looking for this kind of information online, tried to find, I don't know, maybe a guide or suggestions and there wasn't a lot of information or there wasn't a lot of um, well explained information um, and it was also, and it, there was also a lot of different kinds of suggestions. So I thought this making this video would be a good idea if you're someone like me all those years ago <laughs> where I, I need some help choosing what kind of spells I want to take for my sorcerer. So I can guarantee you guys this spell selection will be good for you. It will take you through the entire game. It will help you out. And for the most part I tried making it so that every spell that you pick is always going to be relevant. You are always gonna be happy to have that spell in your spell selection. Okay, so I think this is all that I wanted to cover. Uh, like I said previously, if you guys have any questions, any suggestions, if you want to discuss a certain choice, feel free to leave a comment below. If you guys want to get notified about other videos coming to the channel, be it guides, how-tos or playthroughs, um, feel free to subscribe. It's a free and easy way to support my channel and videos are coming out every single day. Also, if you're interested, there's a playthrough going from Baldur's Gate 1 through SOD, through Baldur's Gate 2, and finally we are currently in Throne of Ball, playing with the Sorcerer, Palpatine. So you can also kind of see uh, how I play my Sorcerer, what my spell choices were, and how I use them throughout the course of the game. Spoiler, the choices are not the same that I make in this video, because I also am learning from that playthrough, and I've made my choices better and more efficient, from my experience in that playthrough and many others. So, uh, thank you so much guys for being here with me, watching this video. Um, and I hope to see you all in a different video. <laughs> Until then, stay safe everyone.